It's time now for the ISU Coaches Show, live from the 7th and Elm Bar and Grill on 105.5 The Legend. Tonight's show is brought to you by York Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, the Volkers Group, Dorset Automotive, the Terre Haute Tribune Star, York Buick Chevrolet GMC, and the 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Now, here's the voice of the Sycamores, Luke Martin. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Corner of Food and Fun, 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Of course, has been our presenting sponsor all year long, but now called the Treehouse here at the Corner of 7th and Elm. So be sure to come out and support us here tonight, as this is the final time we will be here this year. It goes by in a blink of an eye. We get here in August, start a football season, and we go through basketball, and now we will end up going into our spring seasons, which, of course, it's already been a Really good winner, of course, for Indiana State track and field. We're going to talk about them sweeping the men's and women's Missouri Valley Conference Indoor Championships. Coach Angie Martin and Jeff Martin are here tonight. They'll be, of course, later on in the show. Also be joined uh, by some members of the Indiana State track and field program. But first things first, we got another team that's going to be competing in the Missouri Valley Conference Championship this week. It is Hoops in the Heartland in Moline, Illinois. Head coach Chad Killinger will be leading the charge as the Indian State women will open up hoops in the heartland on Thursday in the 8-9 game, taking on Evansville. I know a game that I think the Sycamores are going to be glad to get another shot at the Purple Aces on Thursday night in Moline. Coach K, thanks so much for taking the time here on our final coaches show on a Monday. It just seems like you and I started these conversations just the other week. I I know even though the ending may not be the way you want it to, but I know you've really enjoyed any time you've had uh, to come out here and talk to us and get to greet all the fans that come and join you and support you each and every Monday. Oh, definitely. I was a little confused when I came in and saw the treehouse on the door. I was like, <laughs> I go to the wrong place? No, no. But, uh, new name, new no, name, new brand. Uh, but really appreciate them having us out every week and everybody that comes out for the show. Uh, it's been tremendous. Uh, that we've been able to be here in person and to be able to finish up the last couple weeks here in person has been been great. Yeah, it's been nice after basically almost a two-month hiatus um, with our rise in COVID cases within the department and also within our teams going on throughout the year. Uh, Coach K, let's you know this is a big week uh, for you and your program. We've talked about it. I feel like each and every week as you get closer that one of your goals for this team was to have a chance to win a conference tournament game, which this program has never won a conference tournament game since it got moved to Moline. The last time this program won a conference tournament game was 2014. Well, your team's got a great opportunity this week to try to check that off the list. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, as simple as the goal as that sounds, uh, you know, the, none of the players in our program have done that. And so for them to be able to, you know, go there, kind of cap off the season with a win in that situation would be tremendous. Uh, you know, they've worked, continued to work extremely hard. Um, obviously, we know the schedule didn't favor us in February, and, and you know, we had a little little rough go of it. Uh, but at the same time, I think you can see the strides that they're making uh, within each game. And you know, we we uh, we play so well in stretches, uh, and then and then obviously, you know, we knew it'd be tough playing our last four. Games are against basically the four highest net ranking teams um, in the conference, and so you know to lose by seven at Missouri State and to to lose by six to Northern Iowa. Uh, well, obviously, those are tough losses, but uh, to have led in in uh, against Northern Iowa the way we did, and to led to have led against Drake the way we did, and just have those um, you know games kind of fall apart for us was not disappointing, but but I feel like it just it makes you continue to strive to want to get better. Uh, and so just proud of proud of the effort that, that uh, the young women in our program have given all year. I think there's many things where you can look at the schedule and you can see you know, a 10-game skid in the regular season and go, man, that's that's a hard way to lose a year, and it is. But I still feel like, Coach K, that there's a lot of steps forward uh, that your group has made this year. Yeah, and it's, you know, we were talking today. We had, I mean, you know, last week we had two good, really good practices. Um, today we had a really good practice and we were able to, to – Work on some things that we needed to work on, but then at the same time, um, you know, they understand that um, kind of the situation that we were put in, and we, we, you know, we're not making. Uh, went to Loyola after beating Valparaiso the way we did on that Friday night. Um, you know, I'd much rather have um, come you know, to you and I after beating Drake. You and I after beating Drake. You know, the start of the year, so. Um, those things didn't happen, so we were never able to really capitalize on the momentum from those those type of wins. Um, you know, so that you know that's the disappointing thing, just to be able to see maybe how our team would have responded after you know those two big wins. 
Um, but, uh, you know, again, they just they kept pushing and, and striving to get better. And, you know, I went and looked at, at just comparing last year to this year from a statistical standpoint. And when you look at conference statistics, um, we're better in 17 of the 21 statistics. Um, you know, scoring margin is, is a big one. You know, we're, we're almost uh, 16, I think, 16 points better than last year. Uh, field goal percentage is much higher than it was last year. Three-point percentage is much higher. We finished, yeah, you, no one would believe it, you know. Uh, we finished third in the conference in three-point field goal percentage. We just don't shoot as many as everybody else yeah. does. So we'll fix that next year. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when we play, we, you know, we plan, we want to play faster. Um, you know, there's some things that we'd like to do from an offensive standpoint, defensive standpoint that we never really could get to this year, um, just from a number standpoint and then also uh, from a preparation standpoint. So we actually, you know, what people will see on Thursday is not going to be what they've seen kind of throughout the year because we, you know, we're working on being able to do some different stuff out of timeouts and um, offensively and defensively. And so it'll be, um, you know, we'll have a chance to really just go out there and kind of throw the kitchen sink at everybody. From a player development standpoint, that's a phrase that gets used a lot, uh, not just in basketball, uh, but in track and field and our they, pe- people always talk about player development within their program. When they come in, they develop over time and get better. From this year, where do you feel just overall your team has gotten better? And maybe some specific players that you feel like are a night and day difference in terms of improvement from when you first saw them, uh, when you got on campus really in June a little late there in June to now. Well, I think the first three that come to mind, really, um, Delgin A. Williams um, has just become more of a complete player, uh, and, and I think she's she's still got room to grow and continue to get better. Um, Thalia Lalich has, has done a great job. I mean, her scoring, I think, was around 2.3 points a game, and this year she's averaging over seven, so I mean, she's almost tripled her scoring output, um, shooting the ball much better than she did uh, last year. Then Maya Glanton, um, you know, just she's so much better than she was, and kind of the same thing as Nat. I mean, she's she's got an opportunity to play and shown that she's capable of putting some numbers up. Um, you know, has had double doubles. Um, Nat's led us in scoring several times. Had you know some big time games there. Uh, Delshane was conference player of the week. Uh, you know, hadn't had that happen. I don't think since like 2017 that we've had a player that got conference player of the week. So um, there's so many ways that they've gotten better. Uh, but I think a big part is just confidence. Um, believing in themselves, the teammates, um, you know, belief in them. And I think that's top to bottom um, on the whole roster. I mean, I don't think there's a kid that, that hasn't got better um, in their time. And I was, we were talking about it today, and I was like, you know, we've only, we've only been here really 10 months. So it's not even been a full year yeah. yet. Um, you know, and we were kind of laughing about it. And I was like, you know, we're going to have a full spring, summer, fall, uh, you know, to be able to prepare for next season. So um, it's exciting to see how much better those young women can become, uh, you know, going through a full full season with this. And the areas I would say we need to get, get better at right now, just really it's just mainly like strength. Uh, and, and our conditioning is not very good right now, but that's mainly because of all the COVID breaks and stuff that we had. So I think that set us back a little bit as well. You kind of hinted at there a little bit and before you end on Evansville and preview that game on Thursday in Hoops in the Heartland. I don't know if this is necessarily a totally fair question for me to ask you this right now because it's more of when the season is over uh, type of question. But since this is our last conversation here uh, in front of our great fans, when you look back, uh, whenever this season is done, uh, hopefully after a few more wins this week in Moline, what will, you, what will be your biggest takeaway for you and the staff of, this is where I really want to see us get better outside of the strength and conditioning and working on that. I know that's kind of everyday part of your offseason program, but from a basketball standpoint, where are you going to challenge yourself in this program the most in the offseason? Uh, I think really mainly from a pace of play kind of standpoint. Like we want to play faster. That's not out of control, but we want to play faster and um, with our numbers being what they were and what they eventually got to. We just couldn't do that, and so uh, you know we had foul trouble to, to where sometimes you only got you know you <laughs> two people or two people foul out and, and things like that. So we couldn't really push the pace offensively the way we wanted to, uh, which leads to some easier scores, maybe some easier baskets. So um, I think that's that's the biggest thing that we're you know we want to work on and get better at heading into next year. Um, you know I look at the teams in the in the conference and and you see how. You know, everybody has kind of a style of play, and that fits whatever they have. But we've always been 
been able to adjust that uh, to different teams that we've had. So like this year, we had to slow down a little bit. Um, you know, we're not trying to get shot clock violations, but you know, we're playing a little slower pace than, than what I want to. And so it'll be. I'm excited. Um, you know, for when we get get those uh, guys healthy that are out right now, and to get our recruits in, and, and to be able to really go out there and, and see how fast we can play. Because we've done it the last couple of days in practice, um, and it's it's looked pretty good. Coach Killinger, Chad Killinger is our guest, the head coach of Indiana State Women's Basketball. The Sycamores will hit the road for hoops in the heartland on Wednesday to head up there to Moline and ultimately play on Thursday against the Evansville Purple Aces. will be the opening game of hoops in the heartland. All right, let's, all right, let's talk about Evansville. You get another chance at them. Last time you saw them was down in Evansville with a 58-56 final score with Evansville getting the win. But, of course, no need to remind you, but that was a game that your team led 50 to 34 entering that fourth and final quarter i'm sure all of you uh players staff included when you knew you had an opportunity to get evansville again that's a game i know all of you wish you could have back yeah and i mean it was you know we talked that going into that fourth quarter i said there's two things we cannot do we can't turn the ball over and we can't put them at three throw line and they shot 18 free throws and i think we turned it over seven times um so i won't say that ever again going into the fourth quarter. <laughs> Just make it assumed. Uh, say, yeah. Hold on to it. <laughs> Just take a ten second count, travel through something. Uh, but it's the you know, and it's something that's kinda I don't want to say plagued us, but when teams go on runs against us, it's the live ball turnovers where like you go to make a pass and they jump the passing lane and steal it and go score and you can't really you can't get back and stop that. Um and a lot of times it's one or two of those on two or three possessions. Um and then I think, you know, the the games that uh, we've led several games obviously and, and like I said, we played really well in, in stretches. And that's what we watched today on film was just, like, how good we were playing against Northern Iowa uh, early in that game. But those things those things happen, um, and we let people speed us up. And instead, we've talked about controlling the pace and playing at our pace. And when we let people start to speed us up with what they're doing defensively, um, we get in a hurry. We rush our shots. Uh, we turn the ball over. Uh, we take shots that our teammates aren't ready for us to take, so they're not in a position to offensive rebound. Uh, so, like, all of that just kind of mixed in together kind of leads to those runs that seems to go on against us. Coach, like we mentioned, an opportunity to make some history uh, for this program on Thursday. That's nothing I know that you don't take lightly, that this team doesn't take lightly. I know all of that kind of speaks volumes, but what would it mean to just get that first win in Moline for the program on Thursday? Well, I mean, I think it just it's another step, you know, um, forward just in terms of the development and um you know, we've won twice as many games as, as last year. and then Last two you know, years combined. Well, yeah. Yeah. I can say that. That's the, all right. The number, same number as the last two years. <laughs> and that's like when you talk about that, and not to make light of it, but, you know, Northern Iowa just won 20 games. And in the last three years, our program has won 20 games. So for us to be competing with them already um, says a lot about the buy-in that our players have. And that's what really makes me excited about going to this tournament because we know we can play with everyone. Like, we know we're good enough. Um, we just have to be able to sustain that for four quarters. I mean, you look at the Northern Iowa game, we won three of the four quarters. Um, you look at the Drake game, uh, we were in control of that game, and they shot such a high percentage um, in the third and fourth quarter that I don't know who wouldn't have lost that game, you know. Um, and they've been playing really well. Like, I think they're if there's a team out there that I, I look at and think that people aren't paying enough attention to that could go win the tournament it's besides ourselves it's drake uh, been playing really well down the stretch they beat Illinois state by 42 um i mean they've been playing really really well but uh you know this evansville game um uh, obviously being an in-state rivalry and everything um uh, always means a little bit more but uh you know, I know the girls will be ready and, and focused on going up there and trying to get that first one. Coach K, I've said this multiple times throughout the year. I hope you know, and I'm sure everyone else here feels the same way, the job that you've done this year. I understand that a win on Thursday would definitely send you into a upper trajectory even more. Um, but regardless of what happens this week, I, I hope you know all of us. I have enjoyed watching your team play this year. And even though I know right now in the stretch of 10 straight losses to end the year, there's been so many things you can point to of improvement but number one is just i think it's clear to see that your players love being part of the program they love playing for you um i hope you know from our perspective that it's been fun to watch this year uh, regardless of what happens this week congrats on really a, a really good job uh this year but i know that it's not done yet it is not done yet though for you 
Well, and I appreciate that. And I mean, and I like we do take that to heart. Obviously, this month has been frustrating for you know different reasons, just in terms of all the travel we had to do, and um, you know just the way the schedule fell and, and things of that nature. But that's that's been the one you know kind of the rallying cry for us has, has been we're just trying to get better. Like this this, this year's about growth, it's about process. And, you know, I was talking to Summer today, and, and uh, during practice we had like broken down positionally um, at the beginning, and I was talking to her and Hattie, and I, and I told her, and it's, I was like, I actually hate the process. <laughs> like as many times as I've gone through and built programs from like some of the worst years they've had to great years, and you know, things that they hadn't accomplished in a long time, like I, I, I want to win now. Like I don't want to have to go through the, pro I don't want to make it a process. Um, but you have to understand kind of where where you're at each year and kind of what you're trying to build and and uh, you know I think that belief that the young women have and what we're trying to accomplish is was a huge part of why we're where we're at so quickly. Uh, you know I said I think back in January that we're probably a year ahead of where we maybe thought we might be and I still feel that way. Um, you know regardless of the last month and the results, I just feel like um, the stretches of basketball that we're seeing from them um, with a short-handed roster that once we get you know, and, and it's not, you know, um, just having more competition with, with more depth next year, being able to play at a faster pace with more depth next year um, to where when kids, you know, get in foul trouble, we have people we can come in. Um, we're not just subbing for fouls because we get some games you'd like to do other things uh, from a coaching standpoint, but you get kind of stuck because you're like, all right, Maya's got two fouls. Nani's got two fouls. You're still in the first half. So you're like, all right, we're going to play Maya and hope she doesn't get her third foul and give her a few minutes and then, like, you're just trading them off to see what happens as far as the foul situation goes. So uh, there's not been, you know, some stress strategies that had to be thrown out the window at different times. But I think uh, seeing different kids step up in different games and, and uh, knowing how hard that they're battling to, to try to do the things that, that uh, we want them to has really been, uh, you know, a blessing for for myself. If you can't make it to the Quad Cities, you can listen to the game right here on 105.5 The Legend. John Sherman will be on the call Thursday, 5 p.m. tip, 445 pregame for the Patriot Investments Countdown to Tip Off, where you can hear John Sherman's pregame conversation with the man here to my left, Coach Chad Killinger. Coach says, K again. <laughs> if he says anything about the foul count, don't. don't. You listening, John? I know John's listening. He's, uh, Give I me looked, a few pointers. And our, after, during the, I was watching the game of our <laughs> film of our U and I game, and at halftime, the, the thing that scrolled across the bottom was every Indiana State player that has played has a foul. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "You're going to get us all in trouble." <laughs> uh, but that's the one area I feel like we've got to really stress in the off season about getting better. Like you know, we can complain about officials, you know, until we're blue in the face. That's not going to change. Um, we have to do a better job of not fouling. That's a big part of what we have to overcome, though, is we foul. I mean, the foul count, you know, in terms of free throws is, you know, our opponents are shooting twice as many as we are, but we do foul. So that's one area that we definitely got to gotta get better at and got to get better at being able to get to the free throw line because that's just such a big part. Um, you know, I thought, at one point I thought we were shooting pretty good from the free throw line, and it was, you know, I looked and we were like 71%. And I'm like, that's not too bad. And I looked it up, and we were last in the conference at <laughs> 71%. So I was like, got to raise our expectations on our free throws. But, uh, um, but no, we're excited. Glad to have John making that call. And, and uh, if you can't, can't be out there, hope you'll listen. And really appreciate everyone's support this season. Coach Kango, get him on Thursday. All right, thank you. Once again, that was Chad Killinger. Join us here on the Indiana State Coaches Show. We will take a timeout. When we come back, it's time to celebrate. Missouri Valley Conference champs are in the house. It's the men and women winning, sweeping the indoor conference championships. When we come back, Angie Martin and Jeff Martin will both be our guests at the same time. This is the Indiana State Coaches Show from the Treehouse here at the Corner of Food and Fun in Terre Haute on 105.5 The Legend. Home of the Sycamores, indeed, and home to the two-time champions this indoor season for indiana state track and field sycamores get it done for the first time since 2015 which by the way swept that year too in the indoors <laughs> in 2015 so i guess it's a good thing when the women can get it done so can the men uh program director angie martin joins us the assistant coach of the year in the missouri valley this year jeff martin joins us as well coach martin coach martin congratulations i'm sure still for your group i'm 
not, not you don't have too many objections, right, to the championship being held in Chicago because it treated you very well for the first time. No, that was a great track facility. We um, we actually went up there in December to kind of do a preview of it, and it was fast. It was great for field events, and um, I think that really helped us out going into the conference meet. You know, Coach uh, Jeff Martin uh, joined us too. You guys have really been building this thing, and last year so close, finishing second on the men's side in the indoor. How much do you feel that was, I know it's kind of cliche to say this, but how much was it a rallying cry for your group really this time around to finish the deal? Yeah, you know, I think it was a, it was a big part of uh, the men's success this year. You know, we, we go back and, and, you know, Angie and I would – always think, okay, what could we have done any different that year? Um, and, and, you know, we really couldn't put our finger on one thing. Our kids had a heck, heck of a meet, you know, last year, and it just we just came up short. Um, but the one thing that I, you know, that stuck out in my mind, and I, and I told the men this uh, in our team meeting the night before uh, day one, was um, I remember there were guys crying in the stands because they lost. And that was the one thing that stuck with me was that it meant so much to them that they were so close and didn't get it done. And I didn't want them to forget that. And so I just reminded them that, hey, let's not have that feeling again. And, you know, let's go out and, you know, do, do what we've been doing all year and perform and, and good things are going to happen. And that's what, that's what they did. There is so much about having that internal belief when you get to a championship, even though neither were predicted to win it. What was it about both teams, Angie, that you felt like heading into that meet that they're confident um, that they could they could care less about where they're pegged heading into the championship? We kind of talked about having a little chip on our shoulder, and because people didn't pick us or didn't believe in us, that we had to believe in ourselves. And um, the men definitely had the chip on their shoulder, and the women kind of halfway through the season, we weren't having a great season, and we talked a little bit about hey, we if we just do a little bit, we can get second. And they went into that meet, and we talked about coming home with two trophies. We didn't talk about what kind of trophies we were coming home with, but we were going to come home with two. And they just kept chipping away, and we had people score in events that weren't seated to score on paper um, in both events. I mean, um, on the men's side, Mitch Kennard was one of our last guys. To, we only get to take 32 men, 32 women, and we have about 50 kids on each side. And so we're debating on who's going to make this conference roster, and Mitch Kennard's like, one of them that we're, we're like, oh, man, do we take him, do we not? And he earned his spot. We took him. He popped off and won the long jump and then scored a triple jump, which he'd never done before. So just pretty pretty amazing things. And we kind of had the same thing on the women's side. I mean, Jocelyn wasn't seated to win anything, and she went out and did it and busted her butt. And, um, like, Ayana Hunter, she was seated 13th in the 400 going in, and she got third. Like, just they, they believed and they came out and fought and it was it was pretty fun did you feel there was a moment angie on sunday that whether it was early whether it was right from the get-go or as the meet and the results were going on that you felt all right momentum's kind of on our side we can ride this thing in the monday well i think on the women's side we did we 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 had a great day one on the women's side and um you know we we score out the meet on paper and then we go and we evaluate like who made finals what we're doing and we had way more people make finals. We, we won a couple events that we weren't supposed to win, or maybe we were supposed to win, but um, we just came out and did stuff. So I think the women, we were really pleased. On the men's side, we were a little bit cautious. We thought we could win by quite a bit, um, but you have to go out and do it on, on the day. And we thought we could do it, um, but on day two, there was no gimme, even going into the 3K, second to last event, we were still scoring it out like, can we really do this? You know, Illinois State has one kid in here, he ran in the slow heat, ran fast enough to score, like, we were crunching numbers, trying to figure out if we could do it, what our 4 by 4s had to do going into that final event, and, um... Yeah, but what was funny, Luke, about that was, <laughs> after the women's triple jump was finished, on the women's side, you know, I, I was finally able to take a deep breath and, and sit down for the first time during the entire meet, and, entire meet and, and I'm just looking, and I'm like, you know, uh, they didn't have the triple jump scores in yet, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, wait a minute, we're going to get 18 points here, 
And I'm, I'm like, we're going to win this thing. Even before the 3K even started, I knew we were going to win. And I walked up to, to Angie and I said, hey, we're, we're going to win. And she said, oh, yeah, I think that, you know, as long as Illinois State doesn't do well in, this, in the 3K. And I'm like, no, the women are going to win. And she was like, what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, we're, we're going to win this thing. And she's like, no way. And, and um, it was just kind of. Um, it I don't think I said no way. So. Well, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's clarify here. Let, let's get the facts. Um, but it was just kind of funny because I think that, you know, we we felt that there was momentum going uh, on the women's side. Um, and, and for us to make that realization that the women are going to win was, was really pretty special. We thought it would come down to the 4x4 four four on both sides. And it was pretty neat because it didn't. You know, we had won the meet before that event happened. And. Both teams went out, both got third place, and, and ran really well. So, And that's what's kind of fun about the track meets is when you know it comes down to that very last event, a lot can be on the line. That's for, oh, it, yeah. it probably had to be – you almost feel like, i got to get my emotion up here. I know we already won it, but we still got one more event <laughs> to go um, to get that going through. Uh, Jeff, to continue with you, of course, being named the assistant coach of the year, I know you give a lot of credit to your athletes and how they perform, but just to put in perspective – uh, for what Coach Martin did, Jeff Martin it is, for long jump, triple jump, and pole vault, which are really your three main areas that you look at, swept all those titles on the men and the women's side in each of those three, and not only swept, but just outside of one, which was, I believe was the women's triple jump, you had first and second in those events, which is remarkable, though it doesn't just happen that weekend. It, it's a lot of work. I mean, I remember getting back from basketball trips in November and December, and I'd sneak through late at night sometimes through the North Gym, and there you would be with some of your athletes. It's The work never stopped. What was it about the work of everybody in those three areas that you coached that allowed them to have that success at the most important time? Yeah, I, I wish I, I had that answer. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I just preached all year with my group was, um, let's just get better each week. Just try to get a little bit better. Um, and I know that every coach says that in every sport. Uh, you just want to try to get better. But, you know, I just kept the, the, the message consistent each each week after each meet, even if things didn't go well. I just said, hey, we got to get better. Find something. If, if the meet didn't go well or practice didn't go well, let's find something positive out of the negative and uh, let's get better from it. Get, and going into the meet, I just told the kids, hey, just you don't have to do anything special. Just do what you've been doing all year long. And if we did that, um, we were going to have a pretty good meet. Now, I didn't know we were going to have that good of a meet. Um, but... Uh, you know, they, they just perform. They made me look really good. Um, they do all the work. Um, they make me lose my hair. That's why I don't have much. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, they made this guy look pretty good, and, and I was extremely proud. You know, I, I told my group uh, after the, the trophy presentation that, you know, that, that that award was, you know, an individual award, but it was a team award. Um, it, it was a group award, and, and I, come to, I come each day for that moment for them to, to win and succeed and to do things that they, um, they may not think that they can do. And so that was, it was very gratifying, and, and I'm very appreciative of the award, but it, it truly is their, their award as, as much as it is mine. Angie Martin, Jeff Martin, join us from Indiana State Track and Field, the men and the women fresh off a week ago from winning both the indoor men's and women's championships. First time for Indiana State since, again, 2015 when the Sycamores swept. Swept in 2014 as well. So the third time in program history that the Sycamores have won the indoor championships when sweeping it both on the men and women's side. It was the fifth championship for the men in the indoor. It was the sixth championship for the women's in the indoor. But, of course, the first since you guys have taken over. Um, I know this was a question that I felt like, man, I'm tired of – I say tired. That's not the right way to phrase it. But uh, to Coach Angie and Coach Jeff – you know, one of the first videos I unfortunately had to work on when I got this job was Coach McNichols uh, when he passed away. Uh, that was actually the very first video I ever, first ever content that I made for Indiana State Athletics was in his end memory um, video that, of course, was played at his funeral um, just in Holman Center. When you won that championship, I don't know if it was maybe right in that moment, but as you were maybe thinking of it on the ride home back from Chicago, what was the first thing you thought of uh, when you think of Coach McNichols and this accomplishment and what it means for both of you to lead this program jointly. I know, Angie, for you to be able to lead as a former athlete, both of you former athletes of this program. So you wanted to honor him in the way that he left this thing, and you finally get it done. You know, he was a great mentor, and he, you know, <laughs> I was an athlete for him. Jeff and I both were athletes for him and John Gartland. 
Um, and then I was his assistant, and then I got to be the women's coach and, and you know, coach by, side by side with him for a long time. And, you know, he was kind of like a dad. You know, since I was 18 years old, he was, he was in our lives. So when he passed away, it was really tough. But the one thing that I think he taught all of us was that we had to do it our own way. And um, he let us coach, you know. When I was hired, I was 22 years old. Little smart Alec, uh, you know, female thinks still she knows 22. everything. Yeah. Yes, yeah, still 22, <laughs> plus 20. <laughs> but she, or he, um, he never. When he critiqued you, it wasn't like, oh, you should be doing it this way. It was okay. How are you going to get from here to here? And I think that's something that stayed with us. Um, it's something that our assistant coaches have also. Like, okay, if this is our goal, how are we going to get from A to B? Not like telling everybody what to do and how to do it. And um, so to win both, it was a great honor. You know, one of the first people we kind of think about is Linda, and um, we're, we're really blessed to have them still kind of in our, in our life and in our family, and um, it was a great win. And it was, you know, he, he's still a part of it and looking down, and hopefully he's cheering up there in heaven. Jeff, for you, because... It's not, it was not an easy um, situation. I hope many people understand that, uh, not just because of the magnitude of what Coach McNichols accomplished, uh, because we can list all of his accomplishments and we'd be here all night, uh, but it is the, the father figure and what he meant to the program. And it was going to take some time uh, to really kind of get kind of your recruiting footprint. And this is really kind of the, I don't want to say your first team, but you know, it's been that time where you get a recruiting cycle in and you get your talent in. That was just a time process. I know you want it right then and there, um, but man, it just got to feel good that you know the time and the way that he said, "Do it your way," and then it pays off. Yeah, you know, I think um, I, I think Angie and I both would be lying to you if we didn't ever dream about leading the program. Um, but to to lead it and, and to have it fall, and I don't want to say fall, but um, to, to have it pushed on us the way it was was very unexpected. Um, and Angie, you know, I, I tell you what, I, I can't, I just can't describe how proud I am of her and what she's been able to do. It's tough. It's really tough. Yeah, and you know, Coach, Coach was much more than a than a coach to to Angie and I. I mean, he. What he did for the community, what he did for the program, um, what what he did for me individually, um, it just means a lot. You know, I thought a lot about him on Monday, a lot. Um, and Linda was the first person I texted, and, and you know, said, "Hey, you know, hope hope we made you proud." And I hope we did. No question, you did. Um, well deserved applause. You know, there's a couple other athletes I want to touch on before we get Taj up here uh, and Jocelyn for our final segment. Ryan Porter. Um, new Ryan. A a after the outdoor season she had last year, Jeff, to get back this year, what were your kind of main points for her after the championships in the outdoor and the NCAA, making it to be at that level to come back and still perform at a high level this year? Yeah, you know, well, you know, last year um, I think both her and I would – uh, be lying to anybody if we said that we expected her to end the season the way she did. Um, we knew the talent was there, but for her to make it all the way to the national championships and then participate in the Olympic trials um, w was something special. Um, but also, I, I think it was a, um, a catapult uh, for her to see, hey, wait, I might be pretty good at the Missouri Valley, but um, maybe not as good as I want to be at the national level. And then, hey, not only at the NCAA level, there's a whole nother level with the with the uh, the Olympic trials. So, you know, I think that she used that as some motivation. Uh, when she came back in the fall, we sat down and said, "Hey, look, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to work on." Um, and, and for the most part, we stayed, you know, true to that plan. Um, she worked hard. She still uh, she still can um, grow at some things that she <laughs> needs to do a little bit better. But uh, you know, she she's on her way, and I think that uh, as long as we can keep her healthy and Maybe uh, don't turn her into a, a hurdler per se, because um, Angie likes to steal her from the hurdles. Don't make Angie smile um, too much. But, uh, you know, I, I think she can. Uh, you know, I, I think she can do something special. I know. I know her goal is to break Lauren Martin's record um, in the triple jump, which is going to be extremely difficult to do. But she has the tools and the ability to do so. 
Of course, Laura Martin just went into the Indiana State Hall of Fame uh, here in January. If she can do that, uh, she'll be joining the Indiana State Hall of Fame uh, very, very soon after her competition days. Angie Javon, Javon Moore, third straight Missouri Valley Conference championship for him individually. I feel like every year I ask you about Javon, and I joke with him. I mean, each year he's always been up for the John McNichols Male Athlete Award because of what he's accomplished. Just when you think there isn't more for him to do, he keeps doing it. He doesn't lack confidence. Uh, that that is for sure. We joke around him uh, for time for time for that. But uh, what it meant for Javon to still raise that bar for him, and I know even though that's a great accomplishment, but he's even more hungry now to make sure this outdoor season is a really good thing for him and staying healthy. Oh yeah, he was texting me today and he said, "I need to run some four by fours. I think I can run 47." And I'm, I'm like just laughing, you know, because he he just wants to be that good and he knows he needs a little bit of strength base to to get that done. But he. Um, he did a great job this indoor season. He was so consistent. I mean, it, I think he broke the record like three or four times. Um, and actually at conference in the finals, you know, there's there's some very good athletes. And, and we had three guys. Nor and I had two guys. Um, and Deuce had a – he didn't have a very good start. And I think if he would have got a start, he, he maybe would have had a chance to see him at Nationals. So I think he's hungry enough. I think um, outdoor season is going to be good for him. We just got to make sure we keep him healthy and – he, we don't need to worry about motivation with him. <laughs> no, don't don't need to worry about that or confidence or swagger. Deuce has enough of that, I think, for everybody in this room. Um, let's look ahead to Jocelyn Tosh. We're going to join the show here after we take this time out. Um, Jocelyn being able to get to know as a graduate student here now, taking advantage of that extra year in COVID. Uh, what do you like about them both and what each of them, not just were able to do in the championships, but what they bring to your program each and every day, kind of both sides of the spectrum with Taj me a little bit on the younger spectrum there as a sophomore, and then, of course, Jocelyn in her graduate year. You know, it's funny. Although Taj is young, only being a sophomore, the team, the women's team calls Jocelyn mom, and the men's team calls Taj dad. <laughs> so these two are probably the most mature um, athletes we have on our team. They are great leaders. Um, they make the people around them better. And um, I joke, I tell people this, I don't even know if I told Jocelyn this, but the best recruiting I did last year was getting Jocelyn to come back. So <laughs> she, uh, you know, we, we hired Coach Butler in the fall, and they have worked really, really well together, and she's doing some great things. So um, they're amazing, and you're going you're gonna to have fun talking to them. They're good, good ones. No doubt about it, and I would say, Enjoy, relax. Uh, but you got practice again Thursday, right? Yeah. That's what you're yeah. telling me right? yeah. for, for, for the outdoor season. Just a couple days off, and we're starting back up. So, I'm sure though this how you performed in the indoor is just maybe there's no doubt satisfaction. But do you feel like for both of you as we get you here on your way out that maybe it maybe gave a little bit more hunger um, to really make sure that the outdoor season you, you can add on to what you were able to do in the indoor. I hope so. We're, we're talking about not being satisfied now. You know, we went out and we won, and now we got to do it again. And there's different events. We, um, we add, I think, five more events to the outdoor um, scheme of things. So we'll see what we can do. They're going to work hard for it. I know Jeff's going to be hungry, right? you got to sweep again. you got to keep the sweeping going in the outdoor. Yeah, hopefully uh, my boss here doesn't uh, hold me to that because that's going to be difficult to do again. But, uh, you know, I, I talked to my group um, on uh, Wednesday when we came back from the conference championships. I was using what we did indoor as a foundation for what we're going to do outdoor and not to be satisfied. And so I think if the team can take that attitude of, hey, like let's, let's use what we did indoor um, and, and continue that on to the outdoor season, you know, we should – at least put ourselves in position to be able to maybe to you know walk away with two trophies. Jeff, Angie, I know how much work your athletes have put into this, but I know how much work both of you have put into this. Congratulations, but it's only the first. I know there's going to be many more to come with both of you here at the helm leading the program. Congratulations. Great job. Thanks, Luke. Thanks. Once again, that was Angie Martin and Jeff Martin. Join us here on the Indiana State Coaches Show. When we come back, we're going to be joined by two of those athletes to help them capture some of the Missouri Valley Conference gold. Taj Johnson joins us as well as Jocelyn Keelis. This is the Indiana State Coaches Show from the Treehouse here in Terre Haute on 105.5 The Legend. We are back for our final segment here on the Indiana State Coaches Show from the Treehouse here in Terre Haute, corner of Food and Fun, 7th and Elm also as they just changed name our great ownership here wanted to say a big thank you to max benrava who of course has been great to us all year max uh, and all this transition time uh here from seventh and elm to the treehouse so appreciate you max and 
all the hard work that all of you have done here to keep this show afloat this year and keep me in line from time to time as well up here at the top. All right, let's get back to the championships. Me and Mom and Dad join me as we just told uh, their names here in front of us. Taj Johnson, sophomore here at NES State, and Jocelyn Keyless. We won't mention how many years you've been here. Ten years. This year, ten for you now. Something Gra- like that. Something like that. Graduate student who, I'm sure, right now feels pretty good that you came back. Right? You glad you got sweet talked into coming back for another year? Yeah, for sure. It's been um, a really exciting year, starting with Cross. Um, just a lot of good things happening there, and then obviously um, the way indoor ended was just really exciting and just really fun to be a part of. Jocelyn, to keep it going with you, to know when you're not favored and. How did you as a team and one of the main leaders as the team kind of take polls or polls, especially preseason polls, I mean, in any sport, don't put any stock into them. It's the postseason one. It's the final standings that you put the most stock into. But in terms of that belief that we talked with Coach Martin about, what was the belief like just internally as the athletes where you felt, yeah, we know where we're picked, but we know what we can do this week? Uh, yeah, and I mean, just kind of thinking the conference meet um, is a, a meet where crazy things happen. You know, people sometimes don't perform as well as they're supposed to, and then that leaves room for um, maybe some of the underdogs to come up and perform really well. So um, I think just kind of keeping that in mind, and then also just um, as a team knowing that we are we can perform better than um, what the, the pre-meet uh, polls maybe would have showed. So just kind of thinking about that and keeping that mindset going into the meet. Taj, for you guys on the men's side, how did you take it? How did you take the pre-meet poll and how that maybe had a little bit of gasoline uh, on the fire for you guys? Well, at least for the long sprint group, we knew that we had um, a really good team. Um, and I think uh, I think it was Coach Jeff that sent it in the uh, in our group chat. He said uh, sent screenshots of both the polls and said the disrespect. And it, it, it really was, it felt disrespectful. Um, but I think it was more of us knowing that we had a really good team and that I think we had uh, both teams really had a legit shot to win um, or come or get second place. Personally, how would you describe your indoor season prior to the championships and why you felt personally heading into the weekend that you felt like it could be a really good weekend for you? Um, I think having the chip on our shoulder from last season um, was a big indicator that we were going to have a really good meet. Uh, a lot of the guys were really motivated. Um, we came in, come, came to practice every day um, with goals in, goals in mind. Um, and for me, I think having not so good of an outdoor season last year kind of helped that as well. Um, and then it being my sophomore season, kind of want to take that next step of trying to get to the next level, trying to be a lead, trying to run fast. Uh, I think that really helped. Jocelyn, for you, Coach Martin kind of brought out the addition of Coach Butler uh, and how he's really helped in terms of the fall, getting your fall start into the winter. What's the biggest thing you've taken away from Coach Butler? Um, he's been an awesome addition to the team. You know, he really just kind of came in and, um, you know, just took the situation we were in for what it was. And he didn't put pressure on us to try to perform for maybe having less people um, than what we're used to. And he really just kind of took the time to get to know us individually and as a team and understand the dynamic. Um, and he's helped us. We've made leaps and bounds um, under his coaching. And he's just been um, really good energy and just um, a really awesome coach to have around. You know, looking up both of you today, you know, Jocelyn and able to get to know you a little bit. We've had uh, you do a day in the life video from time to time, uh, you and showing all of your, all of your uh, friends that you have back at home uh, as you get ready and go throughout your day. Taj, for you, you know, just kind of looking up today, you know, from Amboy, Indiana, just outside of Kokomo, mm-hmm. population of 384 people. Yes. Uh, what was it like growing up in that small of a town? Well, I mean, everybody knew everybody, so kind of just one big family. Um, that's where my uh, I think family on my mom's side is from. So I uh, grew up living there, had a lot of friends in that hometown, grew up playing basketball, um, racing people in the street and stuff like that. So that may be where I got my start of being fast. So, um, But it was nice. And then I think it meant a whole lot for my hometown high school. Uh, I got a lot of support from them um, this, this season and then making the decision to even compete collegiately. So um, I think it was pretty cool to, to text my coach and send him the pictures with the trophy and stuff like that. That was really cool. Um, so, yeah, it's it's nice living, coming from a small town. What stood out about Indiana State and why you wanted to come here uh, and kind of your recruitment process to come and compete and take us through kind of that decision-making process for you? A lot of it um, was this was one of my first visits, and um, I was expecting on getting a lot more uh, visits, taking a lot more visits my senior year, but then COVID kind of, like, like shut that down. Um, like it did a lot of things. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, 
So when I came on my visit, I was talking to Coach Angie, and she really made me feel like a, this would be a good fit for me. Um, really felt like home in the academics here. Um, being in the applied medicine major, uh, graduating from an accredited program is really important, um, looking into grad school and stuff like that. So that was, a, that was a major piece. And then knowing that Coach Angie was telling me that we're building this um, program, she's building the program up to be a high-end program, a high-level program, even though we're from, we come from a mid-major uh, conference, and uh, I think that was that was another big selling point. Jocelyn, for you, when you were kind of going through the decision-making process of whether to come back, um, how difficult the decision was it for? It? Was it easy uh, for you to come back, or did you kind of have a lot of long thoughts of whether you did want to come back for one more year? Um, it was definitely kind of a toss-up. Um, I was, you know, obviously it really didn't sit well with me that I was going to have an entire year of eligibility just unused. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I was making the right choice for me, something that was um, going to be a good decision for me. So um, after talking to Coach Angie and just kind of working out the logistics, it just seemed like too good of an opportunity to pass up to, um, you know, just let that slide by. And obviously I'm really glad that I decided to stay. What, were, what was the biggest thing outside of just you knew that you'd have a year sitting there? <laughs> What really drove you back? Um, I think my teammates, honestly. We just had, um, last year was kind of a, it was a rocky year for I think the whole team, you know, obviously with COVID and with um, changing and coaching and everything like that. Um, and just knowing that, you know, we felt like there was more left and I felt like I had unfinished business. So I just wanted to come back and, um, you know, kind of finish things the right way, I think. I feel like when it comes to track and field, no question, a lot of it is individualized, right? You, yourself have to perform at a high level, not just so you can do well, but you can score at a meet to get yourself to the championship side. But Taj, we'll start with you on the men's side. Describe the team dynamic, because I think at times track and field kind of doesn't get looped in there as a team because of the individualization of it, but you guys have great personalities and really enjoy being around each other. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of personalities that add to the flavor of the team. Um, people come from different areas, which is really cool. Um, like Deuce is from Georgia, and I'm from a small town. In, uh, he's from Atlanta. I'm from a small town in Indiana. Um, so it's really cool to see where everyone comes from. Uh, we build brotherhood based off that. Um, we obviously bond over the, the track side of things. And I think trying to win championships, you have to find out like which guys work well together, especially um, – for something like a relay, like you got to have chemistry to to compete well together. So I think finding putting the guys putting the right guys in the right spot to be successful is really important. Jocelyn, for you, how long have you been called mom? Um, probably for about the last two years. <laughs> okay, last couple of years. For you being a mom of the team, what do you like about the team? What's great about your siblings on the team that you enjoy most about? Um, I think just how much um, they just love to work hard and how much they just love to dedicate themselves to it and honestly I don't think they give themselves enough credit sometimes because they go in day in day out and um, they show up and they hit the times at practice and they see the results at meets and it's just been really awesome um, you know obviously for myself to see myself grow but then to be able to watch them just kind of go above and beyond maybe even their own expectations and just see them um, accomplish more than maybe they think they're capable of. There is no doubt internal motivation you need, but I think all of us, what we've seen with women's basketball this year with Coach K, we've seen a lot of the women this year on his team maybe more disappointed after a loss, more excited after a win because of him, because of his staff and the impact that he has had on them. The Martins, I know, have put their life into this program. For each of you, what did it mean to finally lift up, not the runner-up hardware, but the actual championship hardware on both sides, and to do it for them, and to do it for the staff, and to do it for the people that believed in you. Taj, we'll start with you first. I think last year um, it really showed how much Coach Angie and Coach Jeff cared about the team with them having Sage, their their daughter, um, and still bringing, bringing her to practice and still being fully in um, engulfed in like everything that we're doing as a team and and their specific event groups um so for me that was that was the main thing that i really wanted i was like they put so much into us um we they got us to this position uh they they got us fit enough to run fast and so i think that was the main motivator for at least me and i think a lot of other people on the team is like they're putting a, they're putting in so much for us so now it's time to perform and give back to them how about for you jocelyn 
Yeah, um, on the women's side, I think for a long time we've known that we've had the pieces to make something um, to make something happen, but it would just been kind of a struggle of making it all fall together at the same time, and just knowing that um, Coach Jeff and Coach Angie have just always believed in us, and they've always believed that we can do it, and then to just finally have it, um, you know, have everybody show up on the right day, and to have it play out as it did, which just it was a really great feeling. Not done though. Just like you said, practice Thursday. You wish practice was tomorrow, or you get a little bit of a staycation, is what uh, Jocelyn told me on a break. Not going anywhere for spring break, but uh, you at least going. Do you want to start tomorrow, or do you want to at least like another day or two off to run? Doing, doing a little bit of stuff on my own, but as, as for as for the team, I think they should should they should take till Thursday. So. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. That's wise words, Dad. I, mean, I can see why you're called Dad and Jocelyn, Mom, to both of you. Um, congratulations on a great indoor season. Look forward to the outdoor. You know, there's a lot of events I've been able to describe on the radio, but none have been a track and field meet. We may have to get that done uh, at some <laughs> point in time to get 105.5 The Legend to carry one of your meets. Uh, but Taj, Jocelyn, thanks so much for coming out, spend time with us, and good luck in the outdoor season. Keep it rolling. All right, let's bring home uh, some more hardware this spring. Thank, Thank you. you. Once again, that was. Taj and jo- Jocelyn Keyless join us here from the Treehouse here in Terre Haute. Again, this is our final show this year. We hope all of you enjoyed coming out each and every week, starting with football all the way throughout here in the winter and basketball, and, of course, being able to spotlight all of our different sports throughout the year. For those that joined us, whether it was our online stream or here in person, for me, thank you for joining us all year long. So for everybody who joined us, not just tonight, but all year long, from 7th and Elm, and our last show here from the Treehouse. For everybody inside Indiana State Athletics, I am Luke Martin saying so long. This has been the Indiana State Coaches Show from 7th and Elm Bar and Grill and the Treehouse on 105.5 The Legend. You've been listening to the ISU Coaches Show live from the 7th and Elm Bar and Grill on 105.5 The Legend. Tonight's show has been brought to you by York Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, the Volkers Group, Dorset Automotive, the Terre Haute Tribune Star, York Buick Chevrolet GMC, and the 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's show and will patronize the sponsors that made it possible on 105.5 The Legend. Your home for Indiana State University sports. 105.5 The Legend. WBIG West Terre Haute. A DLC media station.